Hey, it's Alchemist Camp, where we level up as Elixir programmers by building things. Today, we are going to do the router DSL that I talked about last time. Oh, and before we get started, allow me to apologize in advance if my typing is a bit slower. I just got a new uh, super ergonomic keyboard and mouse because, uh, well, because my poor wrists need it, to be perfectly honest. And as you may not be able to see, since I didn't open the right image, it's uh, it's a very different layout from most keyboards. It's, uh, the thumbs are doing more of the action, the pinky's doing less, and some of the keys have moved around as a result. So if obviously if it gets to be too crazy, I will edit out the slow points. This is a Kinesis Advantage 2, for those of you who are curious. And let's get to it. We have a somewhat nice looking router here after last time, but what would be really nice would be if we could do a router that's like Phoenix's router. So instead of all of this other stuff typed here, we could just write something like get and uh, the route and the controller. Ah, this is, this is a problem I may, uh, left thumb spacer and the left thumb is backspace on here instead of space and then the uh, the action inside the controller something like this instead of having to type uh, all of this that we have below and i'm just going to comment this out this will be kind of our our goal state oops this will be our goal state so we want to be able to just write one line like this instead of this whole function definition. So let's have a look inside our router itself. Uh, we don't, okay, this is our router. What we need is we need to make an owl router. Owl, as you may recall, is our, uh, our kind of low end fly by night version of Phoenix. So we have a, a controller that's doing some work, uh, defining call for the, the controllers. And we have a page handler that basically just deals with cowboy. So we're gonna add one more file, call it the router. And this is uh, just router.ex. And we'll call this module owl.router. Uh, let's take a look first. Actually, the, the low hanging fruit here, the first thing to do is we'll make a macro that just does what this call does, just to get that out of the way. Let's copy that, go back to the Elbow router, and we'll make a macro, and it's the special using macro that we used last time. So using double under, and we're not gonna use the, the args, so underscore ops. And inside the quote do, we will import the router. And then we will just copy that function we had a second ago. So, and does anything have to change? No, nothing has to change at all. This is just directly copied in. Get rid of this since we don't need it. So we'll make our macro here called get since get is what we want to type in our router DSL. And get, and get's going to take a path, and it's going to take a controller, and it's going to take an action. And inside the quote do, which is what gets generated, we're going to make a function content for, private function actually, content for, and content for, let's look at, at uh, our router. So content for takes a route and it takes a con. And then it passes the con into the page controller. Page controller calls con and the action name. Right now the action names are all the same as the routes. So that'll make it simple. So content for unquote path unquote is part of the macro syntax uh, i will do a lesson on macros at some point 
probably won't go into too many details here. Um, it just uses the path that we got in from the get above. And then we need to take in a new variable, which is con. The exclamation point there is just saying this is uh, this is not from the surrounding context. We are we are matching. We're binding a new variable. And then inside the function, we want to we basically want to have something like like this. We want to have a page controller dot call con and then contact or con and then the action name. So we will use apply and unquote the controller. In this case, that would be like page controller that we see in this line, page controller. And the second argument is the action. Or I should say the second argument is the method that we're calling on the page controller. And it's page controller dot call, as you can see over here. And then the third argument is an array of, or I should say a list of arguments that that call is taking. We're taking the con that we bound above, and we're taking the action that came in from the def macro line, line 13. So that one is not newly bound, so we have to unquote it. That is it for our apply function. Okay, this is probably super confusing, so I'm actually gonna copy in the, the transformation from this file here, so you can see what got turned into what. Okay, so have a look. The def macro <coughs> of a get defines this function get, and it takes a path, a controller, and an action. Here, we have get took a path, a controller, and an action. Then this macro generates, so whenever we, we have this line in our, our source file, the macro will generate a def p content for, and you can see def p content for, we unquote the path, the path is what's up here. Inside the quote do, if you unquote, you get exactly what was passed in. Then this var exclamation point is because con hasn't been mentioned up here. There is no there is no variable called con in context. This var bang will bind a new variable called con, which is this con. And when we use that variable, it's the same syntax again, var bang and the con. So that's how we get the con into the function and then use the con uh, inside the function. So uh, then the apply is basically just uh, uh, calling a function on some module. So the controller, which we got up here, is the page controller. Page controller dot call. And then the arguments that go to the call are in this array. As you can see, the arguments are just the con, which it took down here, and the action down there. So this this might be easier to read if you look at it like this instead of using the, the pipeline syntax. So every time we run into a get that takes three arguments, we will generate all of this from it. So uh, it's, it's a little bit dense. Just pause the video, take a look at it afterwards, and uh, play around with it. That's, that's really the best way to learn. Okay, so now that this is done, the page controller, I don't even want the page controller open. We're done with that. Um, the page handler don't need, okay. The other router, the router inside our, our app, no longer needs all of this. We can just write this one line, and it, so it's it's easy to clean this up quite a bit. 
we can just uh, clone this a couple of times and then instead of two we'll cover contact and then here we can just uh, take advantage of tab completion this keyboard really is going to take a while to get used to this is this is a little bit crazy but that's okay should be worth it get a quoted string there all right and unquote it all right good deal that we need this final one to be up up all right and that puts us over the character limit for the line so we'll go back okay thank you for bearing with all of that um that uh, that takes care of that takes care of most of our controller Stats and content for other are a little bit more complicated because um, in content for stats, we're actually binding a name as well and passing that in in params. And content for other, we're passing in a path. So we'll look at that in a minute. But first, let's make sure that what we've done so far here works. Save it. Actually, this will definitely not work because we have to use the macro. So use owl dot router we'll fire up IEX and it is working here and we should also be able to get two I'm not gonna bother with the super long route okay so that's working good deal Next step is to deal with the more complicated syntax. So for these def P's, for these content fours, uh, though this is this looks a little bit hairy since we're doing the, the internal matching on the structure of the string, it's really the same thing for each of them. They're, they're each matching something and then they're calling page controller with the con, the action, and then a params hash. So all we need to do is make a way to pass in a params hash. So just for clarity, we'll write this out before we even get started. We'll write out what we want to be able to use for syntax. So we want get, and then uh, we'll still match like this because we're, we're matching on the uh, structure of a binary. And we're still gonna pull the name out. And we're still going to need page controller, just like all the others. And the action is going to be called stats. And then after that, we're also going to pass the params hash. Uh, param with name, we use that. And it will still be called name. I should say we'll be passing the name in the name field. We'll comment that out. And do basically the same deal for the the, the final one, the content for, it's going to be, uh, it's just going to be other because we're, we're not matching a string. We're actually capturing everything that didn't match. And this is also going to the page controller since everything we have is in the page controller now. And the action is called other. And the params we're going to pass are the same ones before otherwise obviously it would break our our page controller other all right save and build this this slightly more complicated macro let's just copy paste as our starting point all right okay so we're taking in the same parameters except we've also got some options. So we'll add those in here. And they're not gonna have an underscore because we are gonna use them. Uh, okay, the content for is actually identical. It's still just a path and a con. Then in the generated code, we're passing in those parameters that we took in. And 
they're just going to go into the array of parameters that we've already got. Uh, we have to unquote it because it's uh, it's also something that came from the macro header. So you have a quote do, then you unquote to get back what you had. Unquote ops. And that should do it. Let's save it. Make sure this part is still working. It still is. And now we'll go to a complete garbage route. Excellent. Now the real test is the stats. Alchemist. Oh, you know what? That's because I, I made the stats a little bit fancier. I made the stats uh, show the path. So they'll say where you're getting them from. Just in case I want to log stats for a bunch of sites, then it's just a little bit prettier. And I also added a style to the table. So uh, you have now seen all the changes I did off camera. And you've got to actually open up that page controller and put those changes into stats. The only change is we'll just have to pass it the path. So this, this render CSV is still getting the same stuff from from stats and stats is still just taking in the con and the name and figuring out the path and everything else from it. So all we have to do is add in and assign for the path and then we're good. Path and save that. Kill IEX. And there it is. Looks nice. There we go. That looks a bit nicer. Maybe 60% is too much. Let's make it 80%, 80% width. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. So as you can see, this, uh, this isn't too much left in the router now. It looks pretty nice once we've uh, got our DSL. This is not quite the same, but it's very close to what you would see in actual Phoenix. And all we had to do was use our router. And when it's like this, we can pretty much add routes without uh, too much hassle or fear of cluttering up a, a huge router. If Elixir didn't have macros, you just couldn't get nice DSLs like that. So hopefully you find this inspiring. It makes you want to check out the Elixir docs and specifically look at how macros work so you can get a lot of leverage, do a lot of things without so much typing, and uh, possibly avoid needing to get uh, one of these really fancy keyboards like I did. Either way, macros are pretty fun and we will definitely be seeing more of them in the future. Till next time, code on.